ತಂಡದಿಲುಂಡಾನೇ ಹೊರತೆ ಕನಿಲ್ಲು ದಿತ್ತಿ ಕಾಮರಿ ಬಲ್ಮು ಗಂಗತಿ ಲಂಗಿ ಮಾನಿಂದಾನೇ ಹೋಲಿಯರು ನಾಳಿಲಿ ಬೈತಿಲ್ ಮುಖದಿಸಿ ಮಜಿದಿಲ್ ಚಂಡಾ Emerald Islands scattered in their splendid isolation, fringed by lagoons, these islands sport a dense cover of coconut palms. Lakshadweep lies off the southwest coast of India. The rulers of Kannanore, the Portuguese and the British sought to establish their hold on these islands. The object of their efforts was Koir. Arab shipbuilders had trade links with Lakshadweep mainly for the superior koir rope produced on these islands. Arab ships built between the 8th and the 11th century were literally stitched together with coir rope. The voyages of the legendary sailor Sindbad from the Persian Gulf to China were recreated in 1980 by the veteran adventurer Tim Severin. He completed this seven and a half month journey spanning 6,000 miles in a replica of a medieval Arab ship. 400 miles of coir rope and the skill of craftsmen, both from Agathi in the Lakshadweep group, went into creating the ship. The art lives on to this day in Lakshadweep. The planks which make the hull are held together with coir rope. Arab legends speak of huge magnets beneath the ocean which pulled out the nails from the ships, causing them to fall apart. To counter this unseen threat, Arab shipbuilders developed this technique. Fish oil keeps bacterial degradation of the rope at bay. The seaworthiness of these craft is some measure of the islanders' ingenuity in using their most abundant resource. Coir is just one of the many products that the coconut palm has to offer. The coconut tree, or Cocos nucifera, is a member of the family palmi. The coconut, a fibrous drupe, begins life inside the boat-shaped sheath called the spathe. It splits longitudinally, releasing the flower cluster. This contains the male and female flowers. Such an inflorescence is called spadix. The fruit develops from a fertilized female flower. The smooth outer skin of the coconut is the exocarp. The fibrous mass, 
or husk is the mesocarp. The endocarp is the nut itself. The endosperm is the familiar white meat, the edible part of the coconut. Initially, this solid endosperm is a liquid. It is this part which is converted to copra. In the Lakshadweep Islands, the Melacheri class have traditionally harvested the ripe nuts. Formerly, a Melacheri labourer could only work for a single koya, the landowning class. In the wake of social reforms, these class divisions are now gradually fading. Loosened by drying, the copra is scooped out. These oil-rich kernels are the island's principal item of export. A significant part of the produce finds its way into Mangalore. A small portion of the copra, which is not exported, is converted into oil on the island itself. Oil collected from the crusher is refined by boiling. The oil cake is a valuable by-product. It is used in the manufacture of cattle feed. The coconut husks are processed at coir fibre factories on a few islands. To soak the husks, coral rock enclosures in the intertidal zone of the lagoon are used. On islands where such calm conditions do not exist, the process of retting is carried out in freshwater tanks. Husks are then passed through a buster to separate the fibre strands. A defibring machine sifts out the fibre from the pith. The fibre is passed through a decorticator to obtain the final product. Coir is exported in this form or is twisted into coir rope. Coir twisting is a major occupation of the women in Lakshadweep. Women of nearly 39% of all the households are engaged in this work. Coir, exported to the mainland, is also favoured for making rope. This enterprise in Mangalore obtains its raw material from Lakshadweep. The boats return to the islands loaded with construction material. <laughs> Tapping coconut trees for sweet toddy generates additional income.
the young spathe is bound to prevent it from opening. The sap oozes from the cut tip into the pot. The sweet toddy is known locally as Mira. The Mira is converted into jaggery and vinegar since consumption of alcohol is taboo on these islands. A day in the life of the islanders is woven around the coconut palm. A Lakshadweep household garners a third of its total earnings from coconut related products. Fishing for tuna is second only to coconut cultivation in importance. Coconut leaves help keep the catch fresh in the fierce tropical heat. The tropical climate and the well-drained coral sands enable the coconut palm to flourish on these islands. A mature coconut about to sprout reveals an unusual structure, a coconut apple. Locally known as ponga, it is a delicacy on these islands. Pongi organ, called Cotyledon hostorium, develops in the course of germination. On germination, the shoot grows out from the embryo through the soft eye. The other end enlarges to form the hostorium. This absorbent organ grows slowly to fill the central cavity. The hostorium transfer nutrients from the endosperm to the developing parts of the plant. This white meat appeals to rodents too, and they are not discouraged by the thick layers around it. Dense screw pine thickets abound on Minicoy Island. These provide a safe haven for rats. Rats inflict heavy damage on the coconut crop. The people of Minicoy have violently resisted attempts by the British to clear screw pine. They consider it against their custom to harm these trees. Instead, they have resorted to tying shells and bottles to the trunks of the coconut palm. The islanders believe that this discourages foraging rodents. The palms of Lakshadweep may be of little significance to the nation's economy. But for the islanders, the coconut tree stands for much more than mere statistics. The South Sea Islanders have an old saying, he who plants a coconut tree plants food and drink, a habitation for himself and a heritage for his children. The inhabitants of Lakshadweep would heartily agree with that. <laughs>